In a new Local 3 series called Hometown Heroes, I have the honor of highlighting people who go above and beyond in keeping our community safe and are making a difference. Here's a group of people who are at the right place at the right time to save a young man's life. Graydon Fisher, a sophomore at Forest Park, doesn't really recall what happened on Monday, April 12th. The only thing I remember is waking up in the morning and then getting ready for school. It was early in the track and field season, and what happened during practice is something many others won't forget. We were running ladders, and we just got to our 200. And then once we were walking back, about to do our next 200, he was walking in the middle of the field, and then we were walking along the track, and then he fell on the ground and we ran over. As I was crossing the field, I heard one of my teammates yelling for help. Coach Ziegler and I were at the opposite end of the track over there when we heard one of our other student athletes call for us, and we saw Graydon down, and he was holding him on the ground, so you know, we immediately sprinted over there, and um, when we got there, he was kind of on his side, and, and to me, appearing to have seizures or a seizure. Um, his body was very tense and, and I could tell that he was breathing at that point, kind of, um, you know, not steady, but breathing. But rapidly, those breaths stopped and with a combination of quick thinking and adrenaline, the track team turned into a life-saving team. Kind of followed the direction of coach and, and uh, Went and got my phone, called 911. I sent Tim to go get the AED as fast as we could. I started um, compressions at that point. And so we were going for a while after we, we couldn't find the pulse. And um, it was remarkably fast how the uh, sheriff's deputy got here. Deputy Sheriff Mike Manzel took over and performed two rounds of CPR. When the ambulance got here and they were coming down, he started to you know, not breathe normal, but you could you could definitely tell his heartbeat was back. I remember when they were getting ready to put him on the stretcher and I just grabbed his, I held onto his hand and I had my hand on his forehead and I don't know if he could hear me or not, but I just said like, great and your dad's coming, you're gonna be okay, your dad's coming, everything's gonna be okay. I just, I needed to get those words in there somewhere that he could carry with him. Graydon was taken to Aspirus Iron River, then to St. Vincent Hospital in Green Bay, and then to Children's in Milwaukee. They had told us that he was very lucky and that, you know, it was a 10% survival rate for that when it happens outside of the hospital setting. If it wasn't for the courageous group effort, it's possible that the outcome for Graydon could have been very different. They're heroes in, in my mind. It is a great feeling. It is, it's why I do this job. It's not to put people in jail or anything like that. It's, it's to help the community. Big teams working with you and they all say, you know, how lucky he is, you know, and um, it's just, it, it's truly amazing because, you know, being in a small town, you don't necessarily think that you get that, but we got it. So you can't thank people enough. There's just no words. Doctors are still trying to figure out the exact cause of what led to the incident, but they believe it's a cardiac issue. We did a stress test in Milwaukee, and um, once my heart rate got up to about 180 beats per minute, it started to get a little weird. Like the weird beats started happening that might have caused it. He hopes he can have the clearance to join track again in the future. I want to I wanna at least get one year of experience. And while Graydon may not remember what happened, he's thankful for the people who gave him a fighting chance. The people who will always remember what happened in the back of their minds. Think about it a lot. You know, in the first couple of days after, um, it was, yeah, definitely reflect on it quite a bit and something that I, I'm sure I'll never forget. But, you know, like, like I say, he's standing right over there today and that's, that's the best part of this whole thing. My other role when I'm not working with a track team is, is I'm, a, I'm a pastor, so I'm a storyteller and stories stay with me. And I'll, you, I'll think about them and I'll refer to them years, years down the road and this is one that I'll be remembering this story and remembering this young man. He's, he's got a great smile and I'm glad to see it today.